You spared her. I am not advocating harming her at all. I think she may be a means by which we can track down the Sith in time. Just be careful. I am concerned that you may feel a certain kinship for her, and that she may exploit that weakness. There is something we must discuss. Surely you have noticed that you have been changing. As your powers return, your body suffers. It is a sign of the dark side. All your choices, they affect the flesh, rotting it, as the dark side rots you from within. It is never too late to choose your path. Be mindful of that. There is always hope for you. And redemption. Very well. What is it you wish to know? I am an historian and scientist working for the Republic. Although I'm certain my contemporaries would judge me more a historian than scientist. I have some training in the medical arts, if you are ever in need of healing as well. But my chief passion is history. I came to Dantooine in the hopes of finding some trace of the Jedi. But you know how my explorations turned out. Instead, it seems a Jedi came to me. And just in time. Yes, I have been trained by some of the best researchers in the Republic, which is a humbling experience, let me tell you. But if you ever need some medical items broken down or constructed, let me know. Very well. What is it you wish to know? I do not know if you are aware of how fragile the Republic is at the moment. Its influence is stretched thin. And it grows weaker with time. Still, there is hope, and I must remind myself of it, even when times grow dark. As long as we hold Onderon and Telos, then perhaps we have a chance. The Jedi Civil War brought much suffering to the galaxy, and the forces that Malak and Revan amassed against us seemed limitless. Many worlds were destroyed, trade routes disrupted, and the Republic fleet was almost decimated. It was almost the end. But at that last year, the year before Revan vanished, Revan's assault on the Republic stopped. No one knows why. But it was all that saved the Republic. The fleet the Sith had amassed was no more, and the remaining Sith turned on each other, destroying the Academy on Korriban. It did not matter. Revan had already won. The war was costly, and it shattered the Republic. In time, the Republic might recover, but if a threat strikes now, if certain key worlds are not held, then the Republic will collapse. It is strange that someone who went to war against the Mandalorians would disregard the damage the fall of the Republic could cause. Of course. If you sought battle for its own sake, then perhaps I could understand your disregard. Yes, to some perhaps. Yet the Sith have already experienced their own collapse, and I suspect their new tactics are proof of that. There was no Sith leader since Revan who has survived long enough to rule. Even Malak turned on Revan and caused his own downfall. The Sith respect order and control, that is true. But few of them seem ever able to hold that power for long. To see their philosophy at work is like watching a continual collapse. Just like watching their academy fall in on itself. Forgive me, but there is something I must ask. In my study of the Jedi histories and the more... contemporary records, I have heard tales of a Jedi who was exiled. You are that Jedi. But the records are somewhat evasive on why this was done. I wanted to discuss why you chose to leave the Jedi Order and accept exile. I see. And because you went to war, they cast you out? Do you have a record of this trial? That is a shame. 
I feel nuances are often found when one pays careful attention to historical records. I have studied the hollow record of your trial. I am unsure what to make of it. I must confess that I was searching for some meaning beyond the records. A reason for why one would leave the order. Did you know that exile is a rare sentence? It is not really something that the order can enforce. Believe it or not, it was really your choice. I do not know. That is a question best answered by yourself. But it is you who made the choice to turn away, not them. I am not certain of it, but I believe it to be worth considering. Then I shall speak no more of it. Yes? Is something wrong? At times, I meditate, simply close my eyes, and listen. It is quite calming. I try to treasure these moments before the next crisis begins. Of course, it would be my pleasure. I try to treasure these moments before the next crisis begins. Very well. What is it you wish to know? You are correct. I am afraid I have not been entirely open with you concerning my past. If I look familiar, it is because we have met before, at the Enclave on Dantooine, many years ago. As on Coruscant, Force-sensitive children are taken to Dantooine as well, though it is done rarely and only with those they believe are destined to become Jedi Knights. It is the secret nature of the place. If you are not chosen by a master when you have come of age, however, then the path of the Jedi is denied to you. I met you on Dantooine, long ago, briefly. You taught us the ways of the Force, how to hear it sing within others, within the life around Dantooine. It is difficult to explain the difference between you and Master Vruk, but I think it is because he was knowledgeable, but not a leader, not a mentor. You were different. We could all feel it. And I knew that if I were to have a master, I would want it to be you. And then you went to war. Many Jedi went to war, and the Jedi Masters proclaimed that you were Jedi no longer. Atrus, the mistress of the Archives, was first among them. I knew at that moment that if you would no longer be a Jedi, then you must be correct. I realized I did not want to be a Jedi. Instead, I wished to follow your path. And in any event, there was no one to train me, even if I wished it. They all went to war as I grew past the age of acceptance. It is possible to forget the Force, you know. If you have not felt it strongly enough, then there is little to miss. But I never felt the Force as strongly as I did when I was with you. And so I decided to serve the Republic, study the Jedi teachings, gather them perhaps. It was important to me to understand the Jedi now that they were gone. I felt some part of you should be preserved, so that your lessons would not be lost. Perhaps. I still harbor doubts about the path I walked. It is not time. Yes, is something wrong? Very well. Let me see if I can treat your wounds. There. That should do it. Do you need anything else? You have no wounds that I can see, although the matter of your spirit is something you should address. It is illusionary, the strength you feel, but I will not debate it with you. Your choices are your own. Very well. I think you are right. It is time. I have watched you. You have become strong in the Force again. But that is not all. You have achieved a center in the chaos around us, and I have felt it. My master, the one intended for me, left to fight in the Mandalorian Wars. Now she has returned, and I ask her now if she will train me in the ways of the Force. I have thought about what you have said about the Jedi Order. You were correct. It was a truth I did not want to face. While I do not believe the Jedi to be evil, 
I feel perhaps that they are misguided. It is hard to protect the galaxy when you are removed from it and its people. The Mandalorian Wars. I understand why the Jedi hesitated. But at the same time, I wonder if they had joined Revan, united, if perhaps the Jedi Civil War would never have happened. It is very easy to blame Revan and Malak, yet the Jedi Council was equally to blame. I believe that there is very little truth that can be found within the conference room on Coruscant. The galaxy needs strength now. If the Jedi will not come forth and fight this threat, then we must. And if that strength comes from the dark side, then that is what we must accept. I ask that you train me in the ways of the Force, to teach me the ways of power so that a greater stability may be achieved. I do not believe in the Jedi and the Sith. I believe in strength. And that is what the galaxy needs now.